Okay, you welcome once again to this channel. My name is Akimali Akidia. All right, I want to speak today on addressing greenwashing in ESG reports. Uh, so let me start from what is ESG. ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance, right? So ESG reports, Environmental, Social, and Governance reports. So, so it is a trend nowadays that financial reports are no longer sufficient in corporate reporting. All right, so you expect organizations, apart from uh, providing financial reports to their stakeholders, they also expect to provide how their operations has impacted the environment, all right, and the, the social lives of their stakeholders, as the case may be. And so that's what we mean by ESG reports. ESG basically dealing from the concept of sustainability. So what's sustainability? That's another buzzword, right? It's, it's everywhere you hear sustainable financing, sustainable housing, sustainable governance. So everything is just sustainable. Everybody's just trying to see how they can just smuggle, all right, sustainability into whatever they whatever they are doing. All right. Several decades ago, you have a commission called the Broadland Commission, uh, organized by the United Nations, basically. So you have experts on uh, environmental issues from all over the world meeting, right? Uh, to discuss the future of the world, resources are you know, uh, you know, basically non -re non uh, renewable resources are disappearing, right? Animal species are being wiped out. Uh, air pollution, water pollution, you know, everywhere. So human development has really is. You know, it's really creating cause for concern, all right, on the environmental impact. All right, so so these guys um, met, all right, and they define sustainability as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That makes a lot of sense to me. So we are here today uh, on planet Earth with limited resources, yes. Right, uh, for example, fossil fuels, for example, all right, fossil fuels are not, they are not increasing, they are just there, all right. So that's why they call it non renewable. So as we are taking and taking and taking and taking with our consciousness of tomorrow, so you have generations that are still coming, so you have your children, the children are going to have their own children, children's children are going to have their own children, right? So, uh, if all right, so we are looking at the next 1,000 years. All right, what happened to the Earth? All right, this Earth has been existing for thousands of years. And so what, what, what we, are, we are managing what the people that came before us handed over to us. So the question is, what are we going to handle, all right, to the people coming, you know, after us, all right? And that is basically what sustainability is all about. They're very conscious. The way you use water, the way you use fuel, the way you use uh, you know resources generally, uh, all right. So you, you you want to take and give back, all right. So you take you cut down a tree to uh, what is it called now? Maybe to build a house or to make paper, whatever. All right, it's not wrong to cut down trees. For every tree, for every tree you cut, yeah, you have to plant another one. That that's the mentality of sustainability. All right. Okay. So I, I I wrote here: is sustainability a buzzword or a call for action? A call to action. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it should be the latter. All right. It should be a call to action. But if it's really a call to action, I won't be making this video, right? Because I'm talking about greenwashing. All right. And like I said today, everybody is trying to push sustainability into every concept they create. Right. Sustainable this, sustainable that. So in reality, are we really, all right? Are we really, is it really a fad or just a trend or a feel good word, all right? Oh, we are really serious, all right, about this concept of sustainability. So as individuals, as corporate entities, all right, we need to uh, look beyond just making sustainability a buzzword, all right? Uh, we need to start looking at how it can be a, a, in a rallying call to action 
for organizations, for individuals, for NGOs to actually do the right thing, all right, in preserving the herd. So like I said, ESG basically you are looking at the environment, all right, so things like issues like climate change, for example, all right, uh, resource usages, all right, uh, resource depletion, for example, all right, uh, air pollution, water pollution, and the rest. So that's what basically environmental is talking about. So you have a manufacturing company, they are discharging effluents. Effluents is waste products, right? Liquid waste products, all right, which they have you know, maybe waste product from their factory. Some of these waste products may consist of uh, very dangerous chemicals, maybe an acid, maybe an alkaline, all right, maybe some other heavy metals like lead. That once you reach a particular, you know, uh, parts per million or parts per thousand, all right, the particular threshold, all right, it becomes it become very dangerous in the ecosystem. So you want to so as an organization, all right, maybe you are making soap or you are is a refinery. What, what are you doing, all right, to ensure that your effluent, your waste, uh, basically is controlled, all right. So they talk about circular economy. We want to ensure that on zero waste, every waste you generate goes back to the system, one way or the other. All right. So that is environmental, all right? The impact, all right, how you manage your environmental impact, uh, or you know, basically as an organization. Then we talk about the social. So you also want to have social consciousness. How are you treating your employees, right? Are your employees happy working with you? All right, our customers have been working with him. So people know, you know, like for example, the case of oligopoly, the case of monopoly, people are doing business with him because they don't have a choice. All right, the moment they have a choice, they leave you. Because they're not happy, they're just, they're just locked into you. Social impact, all right, fair pricing, all right. Uh, you don't use a slave labor, all right. You uh, source your raw materials in an ethical manner. You know, so all that social impact, corporate social responsibility, your contributions, your immediate community to the general public, and so on. Social, then of course, we have the governance, right? So, talking about the leadership of organization, so corporate governance arises. So, it's not just about making money, so the board is not just thinking about money, 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 all right? Balance sheets uh, must grow, all right? So, you're also looking at the leaders right from the board, right from the noise and narrators, the directors the executive management, the CEO, all right? Basically, everybody is conscious of, you know, ethics. They are, they are making ethical decisions. They are making fair decisions, all right? Uh, as relates to all the stakeholders. So stakeholder management is very key in ESG because what determines what we do right or we don't do that it is actually the stakeholders, all right? The employees, the governments, the communities, the customer, the regulators, all right, so so um, uh, uh, this is not an ESG class. I, I would, of course, I will do more videos uh, on on uh, ESG. So you have not subscribed to this channel. Uh, kindly try uh, to uh, subscribe to this channel. I will do more videos on ESG. So governance. So at, at the level of, of the leadership of the organization, corporate governance is aligned to. All right, environmental consciousness is aligned to sustainability. That's what we're talking about here. So, so why ESG reports? Why should organizations all right, be producing uh, ESG reports all right, periodically? Number one, impact of climate change. So yeah, we can all see the challenge everywhere, all right? So, so you have uh, arid areas experiencing flooding. So people, this is where you have thought, okay, this place is arid, this place is a desert area. No, there's flooding everywhere because you know the uh, the ice in the Arctic region basically they are melting. All right, so the, the melting of those ice because of the climate change. All right, is is leading to tsunami everywhere. All right, so look at what happened in Japan some years ago. They had a tsunami, they had an earthquake at the same time. All right, so imagine a nation battling those two things at the same time: tsunami and earthquake. That's serious. But we're having more of these surges everywhere, all over the world, all right, today because of the climate change, extreme heat, all right, flooding, all right, so on, depletion of the ozone layer. So people are more conscious 
people, a lot of people are scared, all right? Because when you look at it, you know, I mean, we continue like this, what's going to be left? All right, what is going to be left at the end of the day? So the, 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 that climate change impact is actually making ESG reports to be very mandatory or, you know, uh, good to have these days. To show you that I can tell your stakeholders, look, we are neat, we are clean when it comes to the impact on the climate. All right, number two, why ESG reports on regulatory requirements? So, you know, you know, now we have a standard, IFRS standard of, you know, ESG reporting, sustainability reporting. All those things, we're not there. IFRS is accounting, right? So it's basically international financial reporting standard. It's financial reporting. So you may ask me, what is it? What's the work of that IFRS with sustainability reporting? Yes. Like we said, we've gotten to that point now. So it's not enough to say, okay, we made 100 million, or we lost, all right, so, so million at the end of the financial year. These are balance sheets. It has gone beyond that. Now, so many regulators are making it mandatory that you must produce a sustainability report. All right, so that is now making sustainability reports to be provided hand in hand with uh, the corporate, the financial reports. All right, they're building resources, right? So you have some organization, for example, mining. Right? So you have mining, for example, their job is basically to take right from the earth. All right, so, so if we take, let's assume we are, we are establishing maybe uh, lithium or cobalt or tin or crude oil, right? So you keep on digging and digging and digging and digging and digging. Uh, so at the end of the day, there's nothing else. So if we take care of it, what's going to happen? I was reading a report some time ago that looked at some guys already going to the space and they're already mapping out some mineral resources they've seen in space. So you can imagine people are already looking at it that if we finish everything on planet Earth, we will not go to space. To start looking for minerals, mineral resources to be bringing to the earth. So that concern is also there, and uh, because of that, people, businesses now have responsibility to produce ESG reports. Then environmental pollution, right? So you see air pollution everywhere. I was looking at one year report today. That every year, millions of people die to air pollution. All right, but you know, because it doesn't kill immediately, you will not know. All right, so you just inhaling, inhaling. There was a time in Polar in Nigeria, so you have suits everywhere, black suits, all right, because of, uh, you know, people have, uh, you know, all these uh, local refineries all over the place, okay? Environmental acid rain and so on. So environmental pollution everywhere. So that also has assisted ESG reports. Sophisticated consumers. So you now have your customers now, all right, many of them have advanced degrees, right? In environmental science, environmental management, environmental technology. All right, they know about sustainability, maybe even more than you. All right, because they, they go on YouTube. All right, they, they watch CNN, you know, uh, uh, special programs, documentaries. All right, Animal Planet and the rest of it. So people are more conscious. So people are asking questions. Like eco labels, for example, so consumers will not buy from you if you don't have eco label. All right, which guarantees them that yes, your product or service is is you no know, is following sustainability requirements. The action of competitors. <laughs> so if your competitors, you know, your, your competitors are, are producing ESG reports, and you said the regulators are not asking you to produce, and you don't, they will leave you behind. So sometimes the action of competitors can make us to start looking at how we can. We also need to produce this report. Now, let, let's now get to greenwashing. All right. Uh, so what's greenwashing? So greenwashing was coined by one guy in 1986, an environmentalist called Jay Westervelt. All right. Jay Westervelt was the one that first came up with that greenwashing in an article, basically, in the top paper. All right. And he was watching the back to one hotel. They have a policy for the patrons in the hotel. So you come and lodge with us, please reuse to well because of you know uh, sustainability, earth preservation, conserve water and you know, conserve resources. But the guy noticed that all right, they are saying we should be used to us, but you are also doing uh, you know, they were doing building expansion 
and they have excavators, they have bulldozers everywhere, clearing you know, all manner of uh, you know things that basically is disturbing the earth's ecosystem. So the guy look at it and look, this thing looks like hypocrisy. You are destroying the heads on a large scale on your premise. Then within that same premise, the same people should be used to us. All right. So it's like it's not adding up. So it, so it called it greenwashing. And what that, what does that mean? It simply means misrepresenting the achievement of an enterprise relative to its ESG performance. All right. So you, most of the time you just raise yourself, you know. All right, you 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 misrepresent, all right, what your impact, your impact on the environment. For example, uh, claims on effluent treatment before disposal might not be correct. Oh, we treat all our effluents, all right. The temperature at discharge is uh, at 150 degrees centigrade, all right, but we cool it down before we discharge it. So we have a treatment uh, uh, plant for that to bring down the temperature or to reduce the acidity level, all right? If people, if you don't have an independent test, how do you verify that? But that's what they are telling us, right? Okay? Claims on representation of minority groups at management level might be false. So we have 50% women at our board. It might not be true, all right? Uh, we have 50%, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you have a, a minority ethnic group within a particular country, and that's okay. We will want them, all right. We want to show the world that look, we don't discriminate, all right. It might not be, or for example, maybe the people with uh, physical uh, health challenge, all right. So the uh, people that has a special, you know, special abilities, people basically, all right. Uh, so how many of them are you employing? In, in your workplace or in the, you know, at the board level. What they are publishing in the SD report might not be correct. All right? Claims for net zero carbon emission might be correct. So for every carbon we release into the atmosphere, all right, uh, we take, all right, the same level of carbon from the environment, so it cancels out. It might not be correct. All right? It might not be correct. So the majors with the carbon footprint is heavy. They might be lying. Should I call it lying? <laughs> okay. Mr. Pissett. All right. Claims of corporate social responsibility might be exaggerated. We have spent 50 million on CSR. All right. 50 million euros on CSR. It might not be true. It may not. Maybe if you check very well, maybe 5 million. Or even nothing at all. All right. Claims on compliance, vertical and regulatory requirement may not be correct. Claims on avoidance of using slave labor underpaid employees might not be correct. So many of them don't, if the, the regulatory environment is very strong, so you see many of those companies going abroad. They have actually, so the other office would be maybe in the country of origin, then the factory would be somewhere else, or right, where the regulatory environment would not be so strong. So they can pay anything they want to pay, and people will gladly take it because of poverty, all right? Claims on how raw materials are sourced are being incorrect. So the manager say, okay, get our raw material uh, from, for example, trees, like I, I was saying. So for every tree that is felt, we plant another tree, which might be a lie, <laughs> all right? Or let me say, it might, it might not be totally correct, all right? Uh, ESG KPIs might be falsified, all right? ESG KPIs might be falsified, ESG KPIs. So key performance indicators generally, all right, might not be correct might not be correct. So that's what we mean by greenwashing, all right? Information on the ESG report is not right. What are the motivations for greenwashing reputation management? So you want to belong, basically. Every corporate organization wants to look good, all right? Revenue management, all right? Many organizations now have realized that people buy more from you if you have, uh, if you are shown to be sustainable friendly or environmental friendly so a lot of people are buying choosing to buy for companies that are socially responsible so you can use it to for you know esg can be manipulated ESG report can be manipulated because you want to manage your revenue you can use it to manage regulators all right mislead regulators so you want to just throw regulators off your back off your tray 
So that may be a motivation for brainwashing. To meet up with the competition, everybody, you know, so your competitors say they spend 50 million right, euros on, um, um, what is it called, training the uh, uh, the less privileged. So what do you do? So you want to double it. <laughs> and they will spend 100 million on widows, right? So, so that's the motivation. Then, of course, we we'll attract investors. There are some investors, we call them green investors. So they are looking for green businesses, all right, to invest their money because of their ethics. So you may want to, to misrepresent your ESG report to attract such investors. Now, so how do we address greenwash? So with all this background information we have, how do we address it? All right, so I say start with corporate governance. That G is very important. That G, ESG. For me, right, for me, is the most important. G is more important than E. It's more important than S. Because that's what the time is every other thing. So start with the right governance structure. All right? Um, so you have non-executive directors. So you, you may want to look at the corporate governance code for that. Uh, UK corporate governance code is a very good way to start. Globally is respected. All right? So, so, so you, you want to look at the recommendation of the UK corporate governance code. How should leadership be structured in an organization? So the balance of executive directors and non-executive directors, you have a chairman of the board of directors that is, you know, an independent, basically an independent director. So he doesn't have a stake, quote and unquote, in the organization. And because of that, he or she can make objective decisions, can be a check on the CEO, can be a check on the executive committee, or SDS codes generally. So the internal audit is strong, all right? Internal auditors are strong. They have a voice in the organization. So we have to start with that. If you don't have the right, what could you call the control environment? Right, could you call it the control environment? So if you don't have the right control environment, then we have created the opportunity for greenwashing. All right, so decisions will be there, people making decisions to lie, to misrepresent, to falsify, all right, and so on. So we need to have the right corporate governance, right corporate governance. The number two, align the ESG reports with the periodic financial reports, all right? Figures don't lie, all right? Figures don't lie most of the time. So we want to be able to, so when we are producing our financial reports, all right, like I said, IFRS now have a standard on, on, on sustainability report, all right? So let it align, you know, it's part of what the, is the responsibility of external auditors. We want to be sure that what is in the sustainability report does not contradict what is in the financial reports. So if you are holding the financial reports, all right, you're saying something, all right, for example, the, the, when you look at the expense line, all right, so you see the expense line on um, the amount they spent on community development, for example, in the financial reports, all right, so if you read the financial report, they said they spent 6 million euros, all right, on community development projects. All right, in the financial report. You now pick the sustainability report, all right? Then you now see or the ESG report, you now see they said they spent 20 million euros. It's not agreeing. So you know that something is, you know, you know this is not, it's not adding enough. So, uh, so we need to align ESG reports with the periodic financial reports. All right, then, like I said there, yeah, internal audit should verify and validate the ESG reports. Very important. So before we start publishing, First level check, all right? You need to, to check, all right? Whoever the department that produced that ESG report should send a copy to internal audit. Internal audit should do their own checks, all right? They introduce external auditors to provide independent assurance. So you have consulting companies all over the world. Many consulting companies are not developing expertise, all right, on these uh, sustainability audits. All right, we do it also at Real Consulting, all right? Um, personally, you know, I, I'm, I'm currently a member of the uh, working group, all right? One of the ESG standard that is about to uh, be published, all right, uh, very soon. All right, so, so, so you can give your sustainability report to consulting companies and they can you know, come with your experts, all right? Uh, who are certifying the uh, readiness, you know, readiness certification on ISO 14001, all right, and the rest of the certifications, 
or a relative to has a 40,000 family, environmental management systems, and the rest of those uh, uh, certification, all right, and the new ESG, you know, ESG standards, all right, that also being, being published. So they can look at those standards, all right, and the audit team, all right, every, every claim, every, what we call assertions in, in audits, every assertion is checked by these external auditors. So the, the notes, the reports of the external auditors on the sustainability report actually goes a long way to give confidence to whoever is reading that report, all right, that this report is not being watched. Of course, audit is not absolute. We should know that so audit gives what we call reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance. All right, but it still it just gives you a lot of confidence, a lot of a lot of confidence, a lot of comfort when you realize that oh, X Y Z or the firm, all right, has actually check and they sign you know they sign these reports with the management of the client organization. So we can have faith in, in that report once an external body or external audit or external assessor is involved. All right. Another thing is that you need to consider assessment by an eco labeling body, which conducts a type one environmental labeling program. All right, um, very soon I'll do a video on eco labeling. All right, so you have type one, all right, eco labeling, you have type two, you have type three. I will do a video uh, shortly on that. So the idea behind eco labeling is that, you know, the product has a label that kind of tells whoever is buying. Or the stakeholders generally that the process that produces that particular product is eco-friendly, all right, is sustainability centric, all right. So type one is the one that if that external body and external equilibrium organization does. So that is very reliable, right? People who have it, since it's not you that you are, you're not the one that created it yourself. The other external body that audits your, pro your product and processes and give you the label, all right? So basically, so that is, uh, that also gives a lot of confidence when you have uh, eco label on the products, especially type one, type one eco label. All right, so that's my take on um, this topic. Very interesting, addressing the washing as the reports. Once again, my name is Akimale uh, Akindia. I hope you have learned one or two things, okay, from this uh, video, all right? Uh, interesting, I just want to say the earth belongs to all of us, but let's not just forget that other generations are coming after us and we need to hand over the planet Earth in good shape to them. Thank you.